our children, as reflected in the places where I live and circulate, uh, don't have enough intellectual life anymore, I think is a problem. You know, kids are driven too hard to extracurricular activities, sports, uh, get a good enough SAT score, all that kind of stuff. And there's all the stuff in between that used to contain things like Moby Dick and, and uh, things like that are, are, are largely gone now. You know, we, the, the culture is being ironed flat. And what's being left out is literature and history and all that kind of stuff in large part. Things that give you context with which to make decisions. So there's more of a challenge in that way with regard to the military. The Army has to teach them what they are going to be. And that's a hell of a big job. It's a ongoing process because you're creating out of them something which is kind of a new tribe, you know, a, a tribe of people who have a certain set of values and you want them to be the values that will prevent this kind of nonsense from occurring in the future. And so I think that's very important. But you cannot rely, I think, anymore on American society in general to produce people. The Army has to make them in an institutional basis into the kind of men and women you want to have commanding all those guys with guns. This really reflects just a total disregard for kind of the principles of the office. You know, that there, there's just a body of office of legal counsel opinion. I'm confident uh, that will have to be overturned in the next administration. Institutions really matter. Um, institutions matter when it's the military, Institutions matter when it's the Department of Justice. And it's very important that the Department of Justice have an ethos in which you are taught that your job is to apply the rule of law regardless. And I think it's absolutely essential that the next administration, whoever is president, goes back to the great traditions of the office. You have a culture of, uh, of unity among the bishops. They really did make uh, faithful citizenship, as, as it's been every four years, a major, a major point. They, they list abortion along with a series of other things, and there are points where they talk very strong language about, about resisting unjust war and torture and list them as intrinsic evils. It used to be that um, the administration essentially threw the, the doors of the barn open and, and said you can basically do whatever you want according to the torture memo famously so long as you don't kill them. Um, we've walked back th from there in large part thanks to Senator McCain who uh, introduced legislation that uh, said that the Army Field Manual which we featured in our movie was going to become binding for all members of the armed services. So essentially, we got clarity for members of the armed services that you are not to do this kind of thing. Unfortunately, at the same time, that same sort of clarity was not provided for the CIA. And uh, when I say that there's a semantic game going on, the President and the White House are, they think, quite clear in saying that we don't torture. And then in a kind of quiet voice, they say, but of course, we've got to make sure that we can do all the things that we need to do in this time of national security. And what that actually means is, essentially, the CIA can torture when we think it's OK. So the next president is going to be confronted with an effort to try and enforce what we call this single standard. And the single standard is a, a clear uh, uh, statement that the United States does not engage in these kinds of techniques. You've got to be careful you don't go overboard. On, uh, on everything that went on in Vietnam. I mean, it, it, was, uh, it was a long war. It was fought on the basis of the disapproval of the American people for a long period of time. I think it was a very specialized uh, occasion. This, this failure, this one, is a much more systematic one and is, is one based on the failure of the political class and, uh, and its decision to, to tell these guys in these prisons in Iraq and other places they could do whatever the hell they wanted. The administration uh, institutionally took a lot of steps to make sure we didn't understand uh, and the media uh, was afraid to tackle them you know and so we didn't know you know at Vietnam the media was much more open but right from the beginning of the, the, the response to 9-11 uh, they wanted to keep the media out and particularly with respect to the to the war what father Drew says is absolutely true in fact that uh, that that these corporate structures uh, regard their news divisions as essentially entertainment and uh, and they're they're interested in pandering to the tastes of whatever their target audience is and and so what you're getting on the news is not really news you know it's uh, something very different you know and if it isn't going to appeal to a large enough 
segment of viewers, they're just not going to run it anymore, and they're not interested in it. I think that's the problem, is, is that American society has changed, and, uh, and this, this horrible kind of combination of forces that was described a little earlier here came together and uh, corrupted the few men who had the ability to take things in the wrong direction, and, uh, and now it's going to be set right, and it's, it's a big job to set it right.